We appreciate your testimony as well and your extra effort to be here today. Please go ahead. Chairman Walden, Ranking Member Eshoo, and members of the subcommittee, thank you for this opportunity to discuss the importance of network neutrality rules to job creation, economic development, and innovation. I'm founder of GoLoco, an on-ride ride-sharing community, the founder of Meadow Networks, a consulting firm that advises governments about wireless applications in the transportation sector, and the founder and former CEO of Zipcar, the world's largest car-sharing company. When I received the invitation late last week to testify before this committee, I was working across the Atlantic, and later this afternoon I'll fly back. Despite the significant resources and travel time to come here, I accepted the invitation because the course of action Congress is considering, namely repealing and eliminating the authority of the FCC to enact policies that preserve an open Internet, will greatly harm our country's ability to innovate, produce jobs, and remain globally competitive. And as a successful American entrepreneur, I care deeply about maintaining our leadership within the world marketplace. Eleven years ago, I co-founded Zipcar. Our innovation was to make renting a car as simple as getting cash from an ATM and open access to the Internet was central to Zipcar's success. It is only because of the ease, speed, and zero marginal cost of finding, reserving, and unlocking a car that anyone would be willing to rent a car for an hour or to sell only an hour's car's time. Without an open Internet facilitating these trans transactions, Zipcar would simply not exist. Eliminating the FCC's network's neutrality rules will put future entrepreneurs and small businesses at a significant disadvantage. Network neutrality prevents the telecommunications industry from discriminating against new applications and supports innovative new services like Zipcar. I want to draw an important parallel. Imagine, for example, if Zipcar had been forced to rely on the auto industry's definitions of car ownership or worse yet, had to ask their permission to exist. Our vision of a fleet of cars being shared among a community of individuals would have been seen as implausible and threatening. Likewise, we cannot rely on the telecommunications industry to define the Internet or what people may use it for. Without consumer protections like network neutrality, these companies will define the Internet to, defer, to mirror their preferred triple play, their telephone services, their video channels, and their notion of the ideal Internet experience and they will seek to squash any service that threatens their revenue stream, a perfect recipe for stifling innovation. This is not just mere speculation about the potential for short-sightedness, but rather personal first-hand experience. During the initial years of Zipcar, the wireless industry was simply unable to think outside the box. When we first approached cell phone companies to buy a data plan access in 2000, we were met with blank, non-responsive stares. The industry had only one vision of wireless at that time, and therefore only one product to sell. I recall many representatives not actually understanding the difference between purchasing kilobytes versus purchasing minutes. In their minds, their customers all use cell phones. Others simply did not exist. Today, innovation is the lifeblood of a competitive economy, and the Internet is its circulatory system. An open Internet gives everyone both access and the ability to apply new ways of thinking to problems. An open Internet breaks through silos that often do not get new thinking applied to them. For entrepreneurs, the open Internet allows for extraordinarily low input costs, which allows them to efficiently tap into unused excess capacity and leverage ideas at virtually no cost. Ensuring that the Internet will continue to promote innovation is the reason we're having this debate. And I absolutely agree that excessive regulation stifles innovation and prevents free markets from innovating. But the most important thing I have to say to this committee, and the reason I'm here and thrown all this way, protections in the prote the protections enacted by the FCC will help ensure an open Internet. Network neutrality is not excessive regulation that will stifle innovation. Network neutrality promotes innovation and protects consumers by preventing telecommunications companies from stifling new thinking, new services, and new applications. Indeed, I think the FCC's rules actually did not go far enough, especially with respect to wireless. The idea that different rules should apply and that my experience of the Internet would be different depending on whether I'm sitting at home at my desk connected or in a park bench accessing those same pages wirelessly is nonsense. This arbitrary distinctions dramatically complicate the life for innovators and entrepreneurs who will now have to contend with two different internets, one wireless and one wireline, in everything they do. If Congress wants to truly unlock economic and job creating potential of the internet and fully tap into the innovation potential of our country, it should do so by improving the FCC's rule in this regard, not repealing it. Twenty years ago, no one was thinking that the Internet would be used to share small numbers of cars among large numbers of people. And I don't know what brilliant and unexpected use of the Internet will enable tomorrow. No one here does. That is why it's critical that fundamental characteristics of the Internet, its ability to accommodate, adapt, and evolve, is protected from companies 
that want to control how entrepreneurs and the general public uses their networks. Public policies to ensure this outcome are vital if America wants to remain competitive in the 21st century economy. Protecting the open internet and preventing an oligopoly from controlling how entrepreneurs like me use the internet is in America's best interests. Thank you for letting me testify and I look forward to your questions. Thank you, Ms. Chase, again for your testimony.